Hey there guys and welcome to my home. You guys might be wondering why exactly I'm in my PJs and posted up on my very favorite Zafu and Zabutan. Well, it's because in this lecture, we're going to talk about meditation. Now you've probably heard all about meditation and its benefits for reducing stress, anxiety, and even depression. But did you know that meditation has actually been proven to alter both the structure and the function of your brain? It seems surprising, but it's true. Over the last few decades, there have been literally thousands of studies on the various types of meditation and their effects. Studies like the one done in 2010 at the University of Massachusetts, where researchers found that just 30 minutes of meditation per day over the course of eight weeks produced measurable changes in the posterior cingulate cortex, the temporoparietal junction, and the cerebellum, areas of the brain closely associated with learning and memory, among other important functions. As you can see from the following charts, gray matter density was significantly and rapidly improved in quite a few areas of the brain, explaining the very significant benefits of meditation. Still not convinced? Well, how about another study done by researchers from the University of Jena and the UCLA School of Medicine, which found that long-term meditation practice increases cortical gyrification, in other words, leading to more folds in the neocortex, which is believed to cause superior focus and decreased distractibility, among many other things. Like I said, there are literally too many studies on meditation to list. Studies like the one done in 2015 at the University of Texas at Austin, which demonstrated increased blood flow to the anterior cingulate cortex and insula. Studies that show promising evidence of enhanced cognition and brain plasticity, and many, many more. So let's not get lost in the research. The truth is that meditation is proven to provide you with so many emotional, health, and cognitive benefits that there's absolutely no reason why you wouldn't want to do it every single day. Now, you might be thinking that meditation is only for Buddhists or Hindus, or perhaps that by meditating, you are making some kind of religious or spiritual commitment. And hey, that might be the case for you, but the truth is that meditation is practiced in nearly all of the world's major religions in one way or another, and more importantly, that it can be taught and practiced in a completely secular way. Getting started with meditation can be tough though. First and foremost, there are many different styles and types to choose from, from mindfulness meditation where you focus on the body, to transcendental meditation which focuses on a mantra, to vipassana which focuses on the breath, to trataka which focuses on, say, a single point. Even yoga and tai chi are actually forms of meditation wherein you focus on your body and its movements. So where do you begin? Additionally, I'll be the first to admit that meditation can be very, very difficult. In fact, sometimes it's the hardest thing I do every single day. But there's no need to fear because in this lecture, I'm going to explain to you the basics of meditation and how you can get started today. A lot of people think that meditation is about clearing the mind and getting to a state where you have no thoughts. Nothing could actually be further from the truth. In fact, that's nearly impossible. Even the enlightened gurus and devoted monks that I've met in my travels have confirmed that. On the contrary, meditation is about an intense state of focus, wherein you learn to observe your thoughts and gently let them go so that you can focus on whatever the object of your attention is. The core belief behind meditation is that we have lost control of our minds and we tend to think without intending to, allowing any old thought to rush into our mind and distract us, whether positive or negative. Some people like to call this the monkey mind, and it's a normal and natural part of being human. In meditation, though, we are training our mind, just like we're training a muscle. We're learning to take a step back and to observe these distractions and then peacefully and calmly bring our focus back. 
This can be really, really frustrating. A lot of people, when they first start out, will say things like, yeah, I can't do this, or my brain just isn't wired for meditation, or, or even come out and say, I'm failing. And if you feel this way, it's a really good indication that meditation is probably exactly what you need. I once heard someone explain it like this. Imagine that every single time your mind wanders and you bring it back, that's just one repetition, just like lifting weights at the gym. That's what you're there to do to perform repetitions so that you can grow this muscle that's become so weak in all of us. If you look at it this way, it's just like weightlifting. The new kid at the gym needs to do a lot of reps every single time until he becomes strong, but the experienced bodybuilder only needs to do a light maintenance workout. It's just the same with meditation. You see, over time, you'll experience less and less distraction and your meditation sessions will be characterized by longer and longer periods of intense focus. It's not going to be easy, but with time, you'll start to experience huge changes in the way you think, feel, and act. So how the heck do we meditate? Well, first and foremost, it's important to sit in a comfortable position with your spine erect. Now, you don't wanna fall asleep, of course. It's not that important if you sit cross-legged on the ground and use a Zafu and Zabaton like what I'm sitting on, or if you sit in a chair, as long as you're comfortable. I like to sit like this and I prop my butt up because it helps me stay alert and it's much more comfortable. Next, it's recommended to touch either your thumb to your forefinger or index finger. Now, in Eastern philosophies, it's believed that each finger has a different energy and that by closing a loop with it, that you're channeling energy differently. Now, whether or not you choose to believe that, I find that touching these fingers together helps me feel my heart rate, which can be really helpful in focusing my attention. The next, what you want to do is close your eyes and then just breathe normally. In and out through the nose. It's often helpful, by the way, to place your tongue against your palate or the top of your mouth so that you're not distracted by the desire to swallow. You'll also wanna tuck your chin and extend your spine so that it's in one straight line. Now, to perform the type of meditation that's commonly called vipassana, we simply observe the breath. We breathe in and out at our normal pace, and then we observe what we feel. We observe the sensation of the belly rising, we observe the cool air in the nostrils, we can even picture our lungs inflating and deflating. In some variations, you might control the breath for seven seconds in, seven seconds hold, seven out, seven hold, and so on. But no matter how you do it, very quickly you'll realize that your mind is wandering. Although you might not realize it at first, it might take minutes for you to realize that your mind has wandered. When that happens, don't get upset and don't get angry, just let go. Let go of the thought, observe that you've been thinking, and then bring your mind back to the breath. Experiment with different ways of playing around with this, different ways of structuring the breath, different ways of focusing your attention, and play around with different kinds of meditation. You see, in all truth, this explanation is kind of like teaching you how to tightrope walk by just saying, stand on the rope, walk, and try not to fall off. Ultimately, no matter how much explanation I give you or no matter how much you read about meditation, it's gonna pale in comparison and it's not gonna do anything until you actually sit down and try it yourself. Now, most research indicates that the benefits of meditation are realized by doing 20 to 30 minute sessions every morning. Now, I know for most people that seems like a lot. So what I recommend you to do is not to sit down with a stopwatch or not to sit down rather with a timer, but to sit with a stopwatch and then see how long you can go. At first, you might not even be able to go 10 minutes, but after time, you'll build up comfortability and you'll get much, much more comfortable in the seat. And then you'll be able to get up to 20 minutes and even 30. You see, there's no goals in meditation. It's just about exploring your mind, getting more in touch with your mind and learning to, to connect at that deeper level. Now, there are other types of meditation like Trataka, where you focus on the chakras or transcendental meditation where you repeat a mantra. I'm actually going to leave it up to you guys to research and experiment with different types of meditation. Try them all, see what works for you. For starting out, you might really wanna try an app like Headspace, which is really helpful in that it teaches you some of the finer points in a day-by-day -day process. 
It's a great way to get into meditation because they offer a free 10-day meditation challenge. And I personally know many people who've started out this way and either continued with Headspace or in their own meditation practice after that 10-day period. So thank you guys for watching. And I really hope that you'll give meditation an honest try for a few months and see how it affects you and improves your own cognitive state. Uh, it can definitely be a powerful tool in your super learning toolkit and definitely can improve your cognitive performance, not to mention the emotional benefits, the stress benefits, the health benefits, and so much more. Hey guys, this lecture has been a sneak preview, a sneak behind the scenes, if you will, of some of the stuff that I'm teaching every single day in my Become a Super Learner Masterclass where we go into memory techniques, we go into speed reading, we get a basic understanding of some simple neuroscience and teach you essentially how you can learn more effectively. Now, if you guys have enjoyed this video and you wanna learn more about how you can improve your learning toolkit, triple your memory, triple your reading speed and stuff like that, then please go ahead and check out becomeasuperlearner.com and if you want to check out more free videos here on YouTube, please take a moment and subscribe. And I'm always sharing great memory tips and life hack tips so you can get the most out of your mind and body. All right, guys. Thanks so much. And see you in the comments.